They say age is nothing but a number, but is that really true? In recent news, the Israeli actress Meital Dohan split from boyfriend Al Pacino. Dohan, who happens to be three decades younger, had plenty to say about the age difference. The weed star, who is 43, had a 36-year age difference from the 79-year-old star. Meital spoke out about her relationship in Lalshah magazine as reported by the Times of Israel, where she addresses the age difference as a big issue. It's hard to be with a man so old, even Al Pacino. The age gap is difficult, yes. I tried to deny it, but now he is already an elderly man, to be honest. So even with all my love, it didn't last. However, at the end of the day, even after mentioning he wasn't big on spending, she had a friendly outlook on the split. It's an honor for me. I'm glad this relationship happened between us and hope we remain good friends. Of course, this isn't the first time that relationships with significant age differences went wrong. But how old is too old when you're talking about love? Can age differences really make a difference in a relationship? Well, welcome to the Love School USA. And first of all, I want to say, Christ Christiane, Congratulations to Mital Dohan for her honesty. You know, few people admit what she has admitted about this relationship with such a huge age difference. And you see, Renato, a lot of people just base this difference on the fact that, you know, it's just the age. What is the number, right? And sometimes the person who's older even dresses really young and has this attitude, a very young attitude, you know. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm a young person inside. Yeah, but then, you know, what about the maturity? What about uh, all the baggage that you have collected all these years that you have lived, right? They Don't they count? A lot of that counts, for instance, you can be a 60-year-old and still want to travel, still want to live your life, you know, enjoy life and everything. But there are things that you just don't do because, you know, you've been there, you've done it, and you've, you know, you've realized that, okay, it's not that great or I don't want to do it again. But a 20-year-old, mm -hmm. a 30-year-old is like, but I haven't done it. I want to do it. I want to enjoy it. I want to try it for myself. So imagine two people who have different, th this difference that it's not just a number, you know, it's not just the spirit, the person's spirit is young. It's not that. We're not talking about that. We are talking about the, the baggage, the, all the experience, you know, everything that you have lived until then. You are trying to live life as, you know, it's not even fair because you've lived a lot already and this person hasn't lived a lot. Yeah, when, when you talk about Al Pacino and, and Mital Dohan, uh, you're not only talking about age difference, you're talking about different generations. You're talking about two different people from two different eras. And to add to that, she's Israeli and he's an American, an Italian-American. In other words, they they've added so many differences to this relationship that it's just it comes to a, a, a point in a relationship when the differences are too much and that's the subject of today's show we want to talk to you about this in relationship there is such a thing as too much difference okay every couple will have their differences and you will never find a couple who are 100% alike in everything. That doesn't exist. But you need to know, you need to, to understand that there are differences in every relationship that are manageable, are acceptable. You can deal with them. They are even funny. They can even uh, spice up your relationship. Like Christian and I are very different in different ways. But our differences have limits in which they do not conflict with each other. For example, there are differences such as age difference, which can be too much for 
two people to manage and, and know how to deal with it. For example, one is much older than the other, one has a lot more life experience, is in a different stage in life, has a lot of baggage, and the other one just doesn't. They have different tastes, they have different principles even, right? A much older person tends to have a more traditional, a more um, conservative way of thinking, and a, more, uh, a younger person tends to be more progressive, and those worlds clash. So there are differences that become unmanageable, and people who want to succeed in relationships, they must be aware of it and understand if it's too much, it may kill the relationship. Yeah, don't put it in the account of love. Like, love is going to handle it all, is going to just make you to manage all these differences. Don't do that because, you know, there are things like, for instance, I'm gonna give an example about the age difference, okay? Uh, let's say I'm older than Renato, I'm like, 20 years older than him, okay? Um, I've been through a lot of things that he hasn't been through yet. He's supposed to be my husband and I'm supposed to respect him because he's my husband, right? I'm, a man will want to be respected. But how can I respect him for things that I know already, you know, I already know this is not gonna work, but he doesn't see it that way because he hasn't lived that much so he thinks no no i think this is gonna work so i'm i'm gonna have to for, for him to feel respected by me i'm gonna have to be dumb i'm gonna have to be like okay i know what i know we're gonna do something here that we're going to regret a lot later but i'm just gonna do it so that he can be okay i can't do that mm -hmm. so it's like i am uh, this i am destroying my life because of a difference so that that's when the difference you know the age difference or the principles they d just can't manage by love even though i love him so much i want him to feel respected i want him to feel like you know i i, I am for this for good we are gonna stay together forever but there are things that are going to that I'm going to have to do, to, I'm going to have to destroy myself or my personality or who I am so that he can stay happy, uh, then that doesn't work. And that's where the differences that, that we are talking about. There are differences that, you know, you can manage. Like, for example, my husband and I, we, uh, he doesn't talk too much. I talk more than him. I am more social with people. He doesn't, he doesn't like to be a lot with a lot of friends and stuff okay uh that doesn't bother us because you know when we are with people i am the one who uh, is talking and he's okay with it because you know i i do the talking and he doesn't have to do it right mm -hmm. um, it helps it helps actually helps yeah so the the difference is it, we manage it so that's okay but there are differences that you can't you just you're gonna have to stop in yourself to manage. Yeah. And that's, that's when it kills for, the For example, it's not just age, right? For example, it's, let's say it's life objectives. You, you want to live in the country. You want a peaceful life. You want a quiet life. You want to watch out the green pastures every morning. And your partner wants the busy city life. Those are two incompatible goals in life. Either one of you will have to sacrifice for this relationship to work. And maybe one of you is willing to make that sacrifice. But chances are that if these things are very important to you, you will not be willing to sacrifice for the other person. Or if you do, you will regret it and you will resent the other person. So some things have to be aligned. You know, when it comes to love, there, there are two sides of love. There is the, the romantic, the theory, the way things are imagined in the head of a script writer. And there is the practical, the real side of love. And we are talking to you about the real side of love. Lots of relationships that have started 
like a, a perfect love story that everybody said, oh, you know, they are so beautiful together. This is a proof that love conquers all have ended when reality struck them. Okay. So when it comes to reality, you need to consider, am I willing to make the necessary sacrifices to deal with these differences? If the differences are too much, if you are too different, probably the answer will be, I'm not ready for that. And the relationship won't last. You need to have differences, but you need also to have things in common. You need to overlap tastes, goals, agree with the main things that sust sustain a relationship. Otherwise, too much difference may kill love. Well, talking about differences, let's talk about differences in communication, troubles in communication with the couple in our love lab right now. Yeah, let's go. We were having a conversation the other night and uh, it was, we had a disagreement. We had a, a difference of opinion. And uh, I believe just because one of us are having a difference of opinion, we shouldn't look at each other in a not so loving way. Uh, because we are, we are married and we do love each other, but we do have different opinions about different matters. And I believe that happens in marriages. And no matter how we feel, we should always look at each other and speak to each other with love in our eyes and love in our hearts. You don't talk much when we feel different about something. Or I know you said, I sometimes keep going on about the same matter, but I'll just change my wording. I do do that, and I'm I'm actually trying to uh, to break that and get better with that. Uh, I just don't want us to lose the way we speak to each other or the way we treat each other because we feel different about something. The thing that I don't like what you do is when we having a disagreement. You would and I would basically explain it to you, I feel that you don't trust what I say sometimes. And I'm here to protect you. You're my wife. I'm not gonna let nothing happen. That ain't supposed to happen. You would get so mad behind something like this. And you'll keep going on and on and on and on. And I was please. Can we, you know, just relax? Sometimes it, it'd be hard for me to walk away because when you be saying things, it'd be like cutting me, it'd be like hurting, and it makes me say things back. And that's the part I don't like. And if I said, baby, let's just calm down and relax. We could talk about it later. You don't want that. You want to keep going until it turn into something. And uh, you know, and it's not right. Then whenever we choose to calm down, you don't want to talk for days. We will walk around like you got a shield on you. You don't want to hear nothing. Then if you too, if you do talk, what you say, what? If I call your phone, yeah, what you want? We ain't supposed to be like that. I know that I don't and I have not always handled uh, our disagreements well. Um, and I do apologize to you for that because I know that uh, it's not right and that's not going to help us build, move forward. I have struggled a lot with just trusting you, um, allowing you to be uh, my husband in every way. I've, uh, I've fought you 
and I have neglected you. And I am sorry because in a, a real happy marriage, long lasting marriage, we have to be able to trust each other and we have to be able to let each other in. And that's something that I know I've just been struggling with, you know, on my own. Okay, so Brian and Nicole are together for three years and married one year. And it seems that the main problem they are facing is the way they communicate, right? Um, they're complaining that they get mad at each other a lot of the time because of the way they talk and they don't feel heard, they don't feel respected. And Nicole acknowledged that she's trying to work on the way that she talks to Brian because she realizes that sometimes he feels attacked and disrespected by the way she talks. Yeah, and he feels the same. <laughs> he feels the same. I think sometimes the, the couple uh, gets to a point that you know, they're not really listening to the other. They're just, uh, they're just making up the solution in their head. Like, for example, if if she says, "I don't like it when you 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 speak like that," he thinks, "Oh, she's telling me what to do. She's telling me she wants to tell me what to do. She thinks who she does she think she is." So instead of him just listening to what she said, he's listening to something else. And then he says <laughs> in return something that will hurt her. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, she's not going to listen to him and she's going to listen to something else. So, so most couples who don't understand each other, they usually, they read into things. They're not listening. They hear it. They hear each other, but they're not listening to the complaint itself. They're just hearing and they're already assuming a lot of things, especially women. You know, women do this a lot. I don't know if it's your case, uh, Nicole. A lot of women have this uh, difficulty uh, in listening to a man tell them what to do. Why? Because, you know, we live in a, in a day and age where uh, when women are told not to, to, to listen to men, that men are evil and don't let any ma man tell you what to do and so forth. So, you know, any suggestion, any comment that a man gives a woman uh, usually is taken like, who do you think you are? You're trying to control you're me. You're trying to control me. You think you, you know, and then, and then you're fascist and, 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 and all those words. So you have to always uh, remove all this prejudice that the world has already inserted through media and everything to to people in, in their in their age, Renato. Also, you know, they've been through probably a lot of other relationships, and they usually at this age, you know, they tend to to feel like, oh, it's gonna happen again. Let me put my uh, walls up, mm -hmm. you know, so that I can protect myself. So th there's also this this difficulty, you know, when you get into a relationship at this time of your life, when you're 40s and your 50s, you've been in so many other relationships and you've you've been hurt so many other times. This person, you're already like, I am watching you. Yeah. <laughs> you're not you're, gonna hurt me again. You're suspicious. You're you're afraid. You have a lot of yeah. baggage from past relationships, and you need to use that baggage to your advantage. In other words, remember what you did in previous relationships that didn't work and try not to repeat the same mistakes. In previous relationships, you try to get your way across. You try to force the other person to see your point of view. You shouted, you, you got mad, you went silent for days. I ask you, how did that work for you? So try not to repeat the same mistakes. What needs to happen in real good communication between a couple is, first of all, the first rule of communication, of good communication, is listen. Listen. 
you cannot say a word that will make sense to the other person without first understanding what the person is trying to say or where he or she is coming from. So if you want to say a word that actually means something that is well accepted to the other person, you need to understand what they're saying. So first of all, I suspect here by watching Brian and Nicole talking, I suspect that uh, Nicole is the talker, right? She's, the, she's the, the one who talks more, the more talkative one. And Brian tends to go more quiet and not give the trouble, give himself the trouble of explaining too much until the moods, the tempers flare up and you shut down. So, Nicole, try to listen more. Try to listen more for Brian rather than uh, just explaining and talking and pushing your points. Try to listen more to what he's saying. And Brian, you will say about, you'll talk about this later on in the, in the conversation. You think that you listen to Nicole, but the fact is you're not listening. You're not listening. You're confusing listening with understanding. Okay, let's continue watching and we'll come back and give you a few more pointers. One of the things, and I've told you this, I know millions of times, I like, um, I'm a very compassionate person, passionate person, and uh, I like to be listened to. I like to be heard. I like to um, communicate. Like I said before, I know we may not agree upon everything, but some things we should be able to communicate about. We may not feel the same, but just listening and hearing me and just actually taking my feelings into consideration means the world to me. And I do believe that's why a lot of times I do go a step further and not back away because I just feel like my feelings are not being considered. They're not being valued. I acknowledge what you say, and I do do that, but I don't think it's enough for you. I listen to everything you say, and I don't know if you believe that or not, mm -hmm. but I do. Okay, well, let me say this. If I say something to you, mm -hmm. and your response to me is, well, you do that, that's not acknowledging that is right or wrong. It's just like, it's, you're not acknowledging, you're just saying, okay, you do it. That's not, I don't think that's helping either one of us. Right, I guess because I look at the situation as, okay, you know what's right and what's wrong. And I always tell you, I say, well, why would you do this Mm -hmm. toward me, and if I do it back to you, it blows up. That was the problem. But, yeah, it's the problem. Why do you feel that I have to continue to take licks? Because I'm a man? No, no, I don't. And, no. and, and that's what, what you tell me. If I, do, if I do it back, I'm just showing you a point. You know, and, and the first thing that come out that you would say, mm -hmm. oh, well, that's your excuse because I did it to you? That's not right. So if you feel that it's okay for you to do it to me, mm -hmm. why you feel it's okay for me not to do it to you? No, I don't, I don't feel like it's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's okay, but if my behavior mm -hmm. is not respectful or corrective mm -hmm. and you turn around and you do the same or you say well okay you're out of order or you you're doing this and this is not right and you're right but i'm looking at okay if you're doing it too then how is the message coming across as because what i'll be trying to do is to show you a point 
you know, why are you doing this here? Mm -hmm. And you know it's not right. See, you're not feeling the repercussions, I am. So if I looked at it as if I just do it right back to you, it'll make you blow up. And it's like, if I don't agree with you, mm -hmm. I'm not listening to you. I'm not considering your feelings. That's what you'll tell me. But I'm just trying to show you another way we can still move forward. You see, that's what happens. When there's no good communication, you get mad. And when you get mad, you hurt each other more and you hurt communication even more. So what's happening here is you are frustrated at each other because you are not being understood. You are getting hurt with words and you are just continuing the cycle. You try to explain yourself, you're not understood, you get mad, you hurt, you shut down and the cycle continues. So you need to break that cycle by understanding, first of all, the first principle of communication, which is to listen and make an effort to understand the other point of view, even if you don't agree with it. Yeah, don't try to, to um, have your point of view as well, because you're not gonna be listening. You're not gonna be dealing with the other one's point of view. Uh, usually couples, when they get into discussions, they don't listen because they're thinking of what they're going to say about the other one as well. So that's why you don't listen and you don't do anything about the problem. So, for instance, let's focus on the complaint. She, uh, Nicole comes to you, uh, Brian, and says, um, I, don't, I didn't like the, the way you talk to me on the phone. Okay, so instead of you saying, well, you talk to me on the phone like that as well. And sometimes when I call, you know, instead of you defending yourself and telling her how she does the same mistake, you listen, okay, uh, why why didn't you like it? What, what what did I say that you didn't like? So so you're focusing on the problem she brought to you. You're listening now. And you're asking questions so, doing, so they can understand. Instead of you just jumping to conclusion, oh, you always complain about everything. And No, just listen and try to understand why she got upset by the way you talked. So that's how you, know, you, you can solve, you can begin solving problems of communication until you guys stop attacking each other. This is never gonna end. Even though you apologized, uh, Nicole, you, you, it was nice of you to apologize and say that you're trying to change, but apology itself, it's nothing when you don't do anything, you know, to change that behavior. So if he says to you that he, you are disrespectful the way you talk to him, then you have to change the way you talk to him. So next time you, you have a complaint to make or you have a problem you want to deal with, instead of coming to him, towards him like you're, you're upset with him, bring him the problem like, okay, we have a problem. I'd like to talk about this. So mm -hmm. be respectful to him so that it's easier for him to understand where you're coming from, understand what you're talking about, and also be reasonable. Mm -hmm. When a person comes to you already attacking you, it's very hard to be reasonable because the you know you you automatically want to defend yourself, and you usually find something to attack as well. That's why dialogues tend to to miss in there. Yeah, and the proof that you can do it already is that you're doing it in front of the camera, right? This is one of the most polite arguments <laughs> that we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> in our love lab, because I suspect that because you are in front of the camera, both of you are being very polite, very respectful of each other, letting the other one finish before interrupting, etc. You're doing it in front of the camera. Well, at home, you may not have a camera filming you, but both of you are people of faith. Both of you go to church. Both of you believe in God. And you must remember that God is there watching you watching you when you're attacking each other, when you're disrespecting each other, it's not good. You don't like it. The main request that you're both asking of, of each other is let's not get mad when we talk. 
even when we don't agree. That's the main request. But you've already solved that problem in front of the camera. We're just pointing it out to you that you can do it, right? You can do it. So start by controlling your temper, understanding that it's okay to disagree. It's okay to disagree. You're not going to, going to see eye to eye in everything, but you can debate this. You can talk about this without attacking and without having to defend um, your own point of view uh, in detriment of the other person's point of view. Okay, let's finish watching and we'll come back with the final points. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you feel as though if we disagree with one another that we should still speak to each other with love? Yes, but you don't do that. You don't do I that. I sometimes don't and neither do you. Right. We both, we both. But what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'm feeding off of your reactions and the way you walking and looking at me. Okay, you know That's what? That's the reason why. And I can say the same thing, mm -hmm. but that's where I feel like we we get stuck because with you feeding off of me and me feeding off of you, we're not we just we're not moving forward. Right. Okay. So I have one final word to to tell Brian. Brian, you said that you actually listen to Nicole, but when you say listen. It's not because you're there and she's talking and you are going like, uh-huh, uh-huh, that you're listening, okay? Listening involves understanding. Trying to understand the other person's point of view. It's a great skill and a sign of great intelligence when you try to understand the other person's point of view, even when you don't agree with it. So make an effort to understand where she's coming from. Okay, that's listening in the full sense of the word. And I guess, Christiane, we can conclude by giving them uh, one or two pointers that they can apply immediately to improve their communication. Yeah, I'd like to say something to Nicole as well, you know, about the silent treatment, Nicole, that you give Brian when you're upset with him. Uh, I suspect you do that because... Uh, you want his attention. And for you to have his attention now, you have to take yourself away so that he can come begging you to forgive, for forgiveness. So this doesn't really work. This doesn't really uh, make anything better. It just makes it, it just drags the problem, really. So don't punish him with the silent treatment. I, I've been through that, you know, in our, in our, wet, in our marriage, in the, the first 12 years of our marriage and it's horrible. It's I used horrible. to give her the silent treatment. The way we dealt with it was we created ourselves one golden rule. Never go to bed mad at each other, right? If we have a situation that is not, you know, is not resolved, then we've agreed we are not going to sleep mad at each other. You can apply that rule to your marriage too. So Nicole, there's something that you're not happy about, call Brian. And Brian, if you abide by the rule, you need to understand you may have a few nights that you will sleep a little less until you sort things out. You may not have to agree, you may not need or, or even be able to agree and resolve every matter in one night, but you can talk enough not to sleep with your backs to each other. Okay? You need to create that rule, and eliminate this silent treatment from your communication. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm sure, Nicole, you know that uh, a, warm, a wise woman builds her house, right? A wise, that means a woman who uses her reasoning, not her emotions. So every time you feel something, you feel angry, you feel upset, you feel neglected, you feel anything, Take that feeling to God. Take the feeling, how you feel, what, however you feel, take it to God. Because if you take that feeling and you try to use it to solve your problems, you're gonna hurt your husband, you're gonna be upset, you're gonna give him the, him the silent treatment, and the problem's gonna, not gonna solve. So take your feelings to God, ask him to help you 
be wise so that you can deal with the problems wisely. And instead of you guys having communication problems, you're going to have a marriage because marriage is built on communication. If you have a problem in communication, you know, it's very hard to be with that person. So it's very hard to be in the same room with that person. You have to have communication. So if the problem here of communication is because you both are not listening, or you both are too upset, you both are too emotional, deal with that. Take away the emotions, be reasonable, listen to each other, see what, what he's complaining. What can I do about this? What am I going to do about this from now on? You know, be reasonable. That's why uh, wisdom is what builds a house, not feelings. Yes. The old, you know, time-tested principles of good communication, listening with a real intent of understanding, respecting each other's turn, right? Don't interrupt the other person. Don't diminish the other person's opinions. Value the other person's opinions, even if you don't agree with them. Right. Um, when Nicole said, uh, well, the fact that you tell me, OK, go ahead and do it, you know, as you're saying, doesn't mean that you are respecting my opinions. It just sounds like you're trying to finish the conversation, Brian. So even if she if she has an opinion or wants to do something that you don't agree with, you don't have to end the conversation by just saying, OK, go ahead, do it. Right. Because that sounds like, you know, don't bother me anymore. Just go ahead, whatever you want to do anyway, because you don't listen to me. You try to understand her point of view, debate the issue. You both unite to deal with the problem. Don't let the problem or the differences divide you. So time old um, tested principles of good communication are what are lacking in in your conversations, in your communication style. OK, so we believe that if you follow this, you will notice a very, very great improvement in your uh, communication. Well, that's it for today. We'll be back next week here at this channel. Follow us on Instagram at the Love School USA. Till next week. Bye bye. bye, -bye.